Proverbs 14 and 4. Where no oxen are. Now, we don't speak like this, so I'll, I'm going to read another version of it. We'll, we'll get some clarity. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean. But much in, increase is by the strength of the ox. Let's place our Bibles down. Let's, let's, let's talk to Jesus. Let's ask Jesus to open our heart, open our mind, and help me to be convinced in your word, God. Help me to become who I need to be, God. Jesus, help us, every heart, every mind, to receive this word that we may excel at our purpose and not other things that distract us. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. 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 God bless you. You can be seated. The teacher was giving her second grade class a lesson on magnets, and she was explaining everything that they do, and she explained the north and the south poles of, of the magnetic field and the reasons why it does what it does, and she thoroughly covered the subject. Her students, by the end of the day, knew all about magnets. So the next day, she decided to give her class a test. And so she included the question, my full name has six letters. The first one is M. I pick things up. What am I? When the teacher got all the tests back and started grading them, a major portion of the class answered mother. Now, I know some of you didn't get it because maybe you can't spell, but <laughs> they're supposed to answer magnet. You know, because to a second grader, or to a child, moms are known for their propensity for cleaning house and picking up kids' room. I think we all like things clean and tidy. Yes? Last week's message is not, you, if you miss a Wednesday night, you miss the flow. We like clean and tidy, and now I know that we all dust. Can I get an amen? But we cannot let the purpose of the building be lost at the expense of, being, of it being clean rather than filled. But my Holy Ghost saints that tonight. Amen. The English Standard Version of the same verse, Proverbs 14, uh, 14 and 4 says, Where there are no oxen, the manger is clean, but abundant crops comes by the strength of the ox. Jesus speaking, Matthew records it in, in, in chapter 9, verse 8, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Yes. Well, what's that got to do with it? Well, you have to understand back in this time when the Bible was written, oxen were used. For agriculture. Are you hearing me? In Luke 14 and 23, the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. The Lord likens the growth of his church to that of agriculture. He talks about harvest, and he talks about increasing the harvest and laborers in the harvest. But where no oxen are, the crib is clean. I'll paraphrase it this way, where no laborers are, the church is empty. King Solomon, who was blessed with divine wisdom, said that a stall with no ox stays clean, but there is profit from having an ox in the stall. Owning, a, owning an ox back in, back in those days was like a farmer today owning the best John Deere tractor they make. <laughs> if you had an ox in the stall back then, you were walking in, pun intended, some tall cotton. An ox was the work truck of that day. An, an ox could do the heavy lifting. An ox literally gave strength to the farmer. The ox was of where a lot of faith was placed into the farmer to get the harvest that he was looking for. An ox maximized your ability to harvest, and an ox was built. If you've seen an ox, and you ever heard someone say, man, that guy's built like an ox. 
built to last. Great stamina and could work all day. And this is why Solomon said, there's much to be gained by the strength of the ox. But he also observed and kind of gave us the obvious, but sometimes we miss it, that if you have the benefit of owning an ox, you also have the burden of cleaning up its messy stall. I'm not going to elaborate on the big messes an ox may leave behind. Boy, there's a couple of puns in there if you're paying attention. <laughs> Everything that we have requires effort. Oh, you need to hear me. You need to hear what I'm saying. Everything requires effort. Everything requires cleaning. Every, you, 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 you spend your whole life, but at the end of it, you have put out effort and cleaning time on what's important to you. I'm going somewhere with this. Each thing you have makes a mess in its own way. And that is part of the upkeep and privilege of having it. A harvest is actually about work and effort. It's about focused attention and timing. You, you first plant seeds in the ground that you prepared and God waters and he gives the increase and you have a harvest. But what if a farmer obsessed about the mess the ox made? Upset at what he considered was extra work and upkeep. What if day after day he's, man, this dumb ox. I got to clean the stall. I got to provide provender, which is food. I've got to do this. I got to take care. I got, oh, oh, man, a ox, the ox, the ox. I, Be interesting if after a while a, a really good friend would be intuitive enough to say, hey, I can fix that problem for you. I know how to permanently ensure that you will never have to clean that stall again. You really want to get rid of that mess? Yeah, what can I do? Get rid of the ops and I'll take it off your hands. And voila. Clean stall, pristine yard. Now you got time. All the grass would be perfect. Every ounce of paint and everything is just manicured. But the barn is empty. And the farmer would quickly realize he has a greater problem. If there's no loss, I have no harvest. Now, I'm not talking about farming. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about a church. I'm talking about us as people, as saints of God. Solomon's proverb is profound, and it gives us a positive context for messes. Messes aren't always bad. A mess means there's something in the stall. A mess means there's something valuable in the stall. A mess means... That something is growing. You know, a church that is always clean is an empty church. Never has anything to repair or fix. It never needs vacuuming, Brother Bruce, like we did tonight. If the bathrooms never need cleaned or restocked, the chairs never realignment, or we never need to buy new chairs, or nothing needs that's a dead, empty church. And basically, someone would rather have a clean stall or an empty church rather than literally do the work of God. Where no auction are, the crib is clean. Now, I'm thankful for those folks here that are constantly concerned for our church facilities. I'll be honest, we got an amazing group of people here. They work hard on keeping it clean, tidy, and dusted. But let me say this, living a good and productive life is always messy. Having a great church that's powerful, it's going to require people. People are messy. People are costly. It's funny. We'll throw money at family. But they're just temporary family but we get stingy with our eternal family. People make a mess. 
in many ways. But can I tell you, that's what we're here for. Proverbs tells us in 1824 that a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. Hey, I'm willing to clean your stall. Did not Jesus do that? For How many of you, Jesus cleaned up a little bit? Can, can, can we get to the nitty gritty of this today? How many turn around and know that, you know, and I know you want us to think you're all that, and the back, but if we had moved the entire influence of Jesus out of your life, what would you really be like? How many knows right now, man, God, thank you for cleaning my stall. You ever show up and just kind of have to shove you over the side of your stall? Lord, I've been trying to get this through to you for 20 years, and I'm still shoveling all your comments, all your opinions. How many of you know you got to be tolerated by the people around you? Can I break it to you? Every one of us has got stuff to tolerate about the other. But he that hath friends shows himself right. I'm going to clean. I am my brother's keeper. I'm going to love you when you're a mess. And I'm going to love you when you're magical. I'm going to love you when you're being a retard. And I'm going to love you when you're in revival. Anybody here got that perfect friend never create a problem for you? I never heard of such a one. I was kind of thinking about those two brothers that came over and helped me last night. And I realized it wasn't, it, it really in the spectrum of life, it's been like that. I realized that all what they were doing for me, I had done in the past for others. And I was talking about it and my wife said, she made a, a great comment to me about it last night. And I was, I, I just, I want to thank those brothers for coming and helping me with my mess. And when I, when I thank the church for all the work around here, thank you for coming and taking care of one another's mess. Thank God for a church that's growing and, and things are happening and things are going and, 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 and there's stuff happening all the time because we're growing. I ain't going to get upset at you because you bring a mess. That's what I'm here for. Proverbs goes on to say in chapter 1, verse 30, the fruit of righteousness is a tree of life. The righteousness is all about salvation. And he that when his souls is, I got to keep the ox. I got I to take that brother that maybe makes messes every now and doesn't do things just like I wanted or maybe doesn't have a perfect life. And let's go ahead and let him do something. Even though, he's gonna, even though his life's still a mess, why would I keep the ox in the stall? We're so busy thinking why we can't use people, we don't realize that what God can use you and not any other, other people. Galatians tells us, and let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Hey, seasons change. There's harvest time, there's, there's sowing time. There's, there's, there's fall, there's wind, there's all those seeds. Everybody has seasons. You and I have seeds. Don't miss your growing season. Give, give me my mess. I'd rather have my mess than an empty stall. I'd rather have the mess of the church uh, than the cleanliness of a backslid worldly life. As we have therefore opportunity, as we therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household or the stall of faith. Thessalonians tells us, be not weary in well-doing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Be careful where you're so quick to put time and then that be ill will towards where you put your time. It's funny, we'll, we'll spend so much time on habits and hobbies, and then we got a governor on, well, the church. We don't realize this is eternal. That's temporal. We, 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 we're proud of our time and our resources and our, and our financial stewardship. But you have to understand it's all a part about taking care of whatever stall is important to you. 
Let's keep growing. Amen. Amen. Let, 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 let's go and say, you know what? Maybe we need some big oxes around here willing to go out into the harvest field. You don't worry. You let me worry about taking care of the mess. Hello? Let's keep loving each other. Well, they see, why do you got to say that? Because we make messes. I'm thankful for what you bring to the table. And I'll take you in all your mess. Give me the mess. Give me the mess. Are you hear what I'm saying? I know our lives are full. Our lives are busy. There's people that are, they're, you're still, you're training up children. You're serving others. You're, 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 you're keeping your faith on track. You're, you got, on top of that, you got school, you got work, and you got a chaotic, challenging life. Can I tell you this? Can I, can, see, see, let me just be honest with you. An active, honest Christian life will never have an immaculate showroom look. If you got time for everything in your life to be perfect and everything about you to be immaculate, you're probably not in the harvest field. Are you hearing me? You're not going to have that show. You ever walk into a showroom where they're trying to sell refrigerators and dishwashers and appliances? They got someone a full time in there making sure they ain't a smudge on them. How many is like that in your house right now? Here's where people are. They're going to be a mess. Are you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> the church ain't a showroom. The, it's a stall. <laughs> There's going to be some smudges of frustration. There's going to be some clutter to our calendars. There's going to be busyness. A, a truly committed Christian life will look vastly different from a worldly life. Mm -hmm. The Bible lets us know that a little laying of the hands and taking thy knees is going to lead to trouble. That we need to be, hey, get exhausted in the things of God. Amen. If you're going to be busy, make sure the things of God are involved because Christianity has different priorities. Being a true Christ follower and leading a family and serving others can be a bit messy, but there will be much to gain from those things. Matthew 25 and 21, he said this. His Lord said to him, well done. Thou good and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful or over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the... He ain't going to say that if your yard is immaculate for a hundred years and the church is hurt. Go read the book of Haggai. I ain't going to go there tonight. I hope you read your Bible. I hope you know what it says. I hope you can feel this presence of the Lord dealing with our hearts. And our, hey, it's okay to be chaotic a little bit when you're a Christian. You are going to be blowing and going to do things right. But how many of us blow and go for all the things of the world? You blow a lot of money. Oh, wait a minute. Spend a lot of money on that and you don't think about it. But when it comes to the church, I'd rather have a chaotic Christian life than to have a perfectly tidy life because I've isolated myself away from the kingdom of God and have been uncommitted and unknown to the Lord. Yeah. Give me my mess. Give me my mess over missing heaven. Give me my mess and my brothers and my sisters in the Lord over an immaculate manicured yard. Let me go ahead and have to really do. See, see the reason some of you don't know how to pray it's because you've never been willing to take on the problem and the mess of loving people. Because if you don't care, you won't be there to pray. If you, if you really struggle with thinking about something to pray for, my God, you ought to look around this room and realize there's a lot of people here. You know what? They're worth your prayer time. That's your brother. That's your sister. Do they bring a mess? Yeah, but that's what our prayer time's for. I, give me my mess. Give me my brother's mess. Give me my sister. I, mean, I don't care if we got to pray him through. I don't care if we got to pray him. I don't care if we got to counsel and help them out financially and be there. I don't want a manicured lawn on the way to hell. Give me a message to church. I don't know who wrote this. It's not mine. But it's a, it's a thank you. It says, thank you, God. For all I have to do today. Thanks, Lord, for this sink of dirty dishes. It shows we've had plenty to eat. 
Thanks, Lord, for this pile of dirty laundry. It shows we have clothes to wear. Thanks, God, for these unmade beds. They were warm and so comfortable last night. I know there are those who are homeless and have no bed today. Thank, Lord, for this bathroom complete with a mirror that needs Windex, a counter that needs wiped down, and a commode that could use some attention. Thank you, God, for the towels that need washing because someone had hot water to take a shower in. Thank God for the finger-smudged refrigerator that needs defrosting. It's got a nice large pitcher of ice-cold tea, ginger ale, and some tasty leftovers. Thank God for this oven that absolutely needs to be cleaned. It's baked and cooked so many things that we've enjoyed over the years. The whole family is grateful for that messy yard that needs mowing, that has toys that needs to get picked up, and a lawn that'll need raking because we've all enjoyed using the yard. Thanks, God, even for the slamming screen door that lets me know my kids are healthy and able to run and play. Lord, I need to do all these chores and more that are waiting on me. I want to thank you because you have richly blessed me and my family. And I will do them cheerfully and I shall do them gratefully. Amen. Give me my mess. Give me my mess. Give me my mess. I don't want, I'm not talking about just my mess at home. I'm talking about the mess right here. Hey, if you've been a mess and you brought your mess into the church, why don't you stand and thank God for cleaning up your mess? If you've ever been the one that had an ugly spirit and a bad attitude and someone hugged you and someone greeted you and someone prayed for you and someone sang, thank God for that. Thank God for a church and church. Give me the mess of my brothers and my, I'm going to love my church. I'll take the bed. You can be seated. As a church, having more and more for, folks adds to the chores, adds to the expenses around here. I'm very thankful. And I welcome the, the work. I welcome the expenses. If you're on the leadership team, you have heard me say, please bring me some problems. When we're talking about doing something, I'll say this. It's not the most eloquent. I want you to argue with me. I want to find the best way to do it. In other words, let's jump into the mess and figure it out. <laughs> I'm thankful for an amazing group of folks here that are not afraid of taking on a busy church schedule, a busy life, because they're going to be faithful to God because they want to focus their heart and their lives on the kingdom of God and lead their family into it. I am my brother's keeper, and I never want anybody that's around me to ever look on the church as a problem. Give me my mess. Yes, I never want to hear out of the mouth of anybody I love that I hate the church or I dislike the church or I don't want to go to church. I'm, that means I've led wrong. That means I've done something wrong. That means I've been, my leadership is lacking. I, I want to see some. Give me the mess of the church. It's the only thing that's really going to matter in it when it's all said and done. Give me the mess. Give me my mess. I'll take the mess. Jesus taught me that. And so did the ox. Are you hearing me? Jesus carries our load of sin through this dry, hard world. The plow that the ox bore was made of wood just as his plow was made of wood. Jesus was born in a manger, a stall with cattle. Jesus was the type of ox for us. He pulled the cart of the church. And one day he's going to pull it all the way home. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? I said that to say this. The Bible tells us in Isaiah, in a profound way, said, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant 
and as a root out of dry ground and hath no form of comeliness and we shall see him and there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. You've rejected him because it's not clean and tidy. A man of sorrow is acquainted to agree, oh, we don't like that. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. No one without true biblical understanding would want an ox, a savior, or a dirty stall. Because clean stalls seem so nice. Well manicured lives, and where we look like we're, we're, we're the envy of the neighborhood, just seems so important, and it's been made so important. You know, with everything looking perfect, with everything money can buy, why would I deny myself all that to clean a stall? Why would I deny myself all that to go to church? Why, why would I deny myself the image of a great life to come to a church where there's a bunch of messy folks? Too much work, right? So Solomon was on to something when he wrote this saying, where no oxen are, the crib is clean. But much increases by the strength of the ox. And I declare again tonight, give me my mess. I'll take the church and all its care and all its needed upkeep over any life this world has to offer. Christians in churches all across America say they want the results of a soul-winning church but they want that clean crib with it, and it won't happen. God wants to put folks to work. Because there's people he wants to be filled with the Holy Ghost. But if you're not willing to go into the harvest field, if you're not willing to buy in to wanting to clean up the mess, to deal with knocking a door or teaching a Bible study or pushing back the plate or doing something on a night that doesn't fit into the American way. The Bible reminds us in Acts chapter 2, and they continued daily with one accord in the temple. Did, did he say daily or just Sundays and Wednesdays? I know some of us, we think we got, we got one God and holiness down and you stop there and you're still in kindergarten spiritually, and breaking bread from house to house. Oh, wait a minute, house? Did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart? We'll see what that, that means, minister. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Why? Because the loving of people and the reaching of people became important to God's people. If you don't want to roll up your sleeves and get involved in the kingdom of God, we'll have a clean crib, but no increase, no power, and no God. The greatest accolade I can give you, folks, is if you've been around just even just a short time or been around, Every preacher that's come through here has talked about your worship. This just, just Monday, I was on the phone with a pastor, and he said, man, I have talked to people that have preached in your church. He's talked about how amazing church you are and how people love to come and preach here. Let me tell you something. Praise God. Amen. Let's keep that idea. I'm, 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 I, I, yeah. Give me the mess. I will be the church. I'm going to love people and reach people and be about my father's business. Mark, it says in 1615, he said, and go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go ahead and let those go off to have a clean crib and see no church growth. Are you hear what I'm saying? Well, I'm going to tell you something tonight. Give me that person with that scarred past. 
pray that God would fully use someone in here to help clean up that mess. Because you know how to clean it up. You've been there. Give, 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 give me that single mother trying to raise kids by herself. And we'll help her out with that financial mess. Some of you have got to get a hold of what God's trying to tell this church. He's got people to bring it. They're going to be messy. But you got to say, I'm willing to help the mess. Oh, they said, oh, they don't want the homeless people. They're dirty. Give me the mess. Give me a soul. Let's fill that baptismal up. Find somebody. I don't care about your manicured yard. I don't care how clean your car is. You better get some in the house of God. Give me the mess, Jesus. Help me love God and love souls enough. Give me the mess, God. We want to be about your business. Oh, my God, I don't know. She's pregnant and out of wedlock. I don't care. Let's throw a baby shower. Let's show, let's let's help them get some things. Let's fix this family. Let's love them. Oh, they've been to prison. Well, I'd rather someone that's been to prison come in and get set free than someone in the prison of worldliness that got the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost can't even set them free. Hello. Are you hearing me? Because where no oxen are, the crib is clean. It's kind of hard to get you excited about wanting to be an ox. I know you're too dignified. You call it dignified. I'm going to call it petrified. <laughs> Putrefied. Hello? Paul makes a statement, and I wonder, because if you know your Bible, there was dialogue about Paul between church folks. Nobody wanted to touch that mess. And so I wonder when Paul realized the plight he put people in. Any of you realize the plight you've put people in? Oh, I know all you think about now is how great you are for the church. But before you got to that level, do you remember when you first walked in? You know, when you were stingy and didn't like anybody and everybody has to do it your way. Oh, wait a minute. Wasn't that long ago, was it? Paul makes a statement. I believe he realized that, well, he said, I come all things to all men. That by all means I might save some. What's he saying? I don't care what the mess is. Want to be a soul winner? You got to quit caring what the mess is. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. How does this happen, Brother Bruce? How do we how do we get there? You know, Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6 makes a great statement. It's right here. So we built the wall, and the wall was joined together under after a, for the people had a mind to work. Some of us pride ourselves on our busyness, but are you busy in something that's going to be eternal? How many times did someone build an altar in, in the Bible and the power of God fell? Mm. Abundant crops come by the strength of the ox. If the barn or church is going to be filled with harvested crops and oxes needed, if the church is to be richly populated, the ox, in other words, the believers, are needed. I know, I know you confess with your mouth, but are you willing to get in the yoke under the anointing? Mm. And say, you know, I don't want to just talk the talk. Let me walk. Whatever it needs, Pastor. Whatever it needs, let me get in there. I've, I've got it right here. I've got it. I can help that. That, that. God's blessed me there. I've got. If you can sing and you're not singing, you're not using your strength. If you can preach and you're not preaching, you're not using your strength. If, if, if you can give and you're not giving, if you can live and you're not li- Almost sound like I'm about to bust in a rhyme there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Any Christian project, any church project, the work of God needs workers to flourish. To stand. Give me my mess. If you look, all those people following Jesus multiple times, whether it was the lady with the issue of blood that was pressing through or blind Bartimaeus that was crying out, you know, they always wanted to push the people with problems away. But yet when Jesus got involved, no spectators, Where's the participators? Are you hearing what I'm saying? I guess the question to answer, you must first ask the question yourself. Are you willing to ask God for a mess? I can't imagine Brother Monroe's mindset when he had to start working with me. My wife does a little bit. (laughs) She lives with me. Walking into my house. You know, Brother Jonathan, what he did back then, you remember the telephone recorder, answering machine, answering machine. Remember those? He comes over to my house. I got my answering set up. He just sits there and hits there, deleting all my... Bad phone calls, phone numbers and stuff. Yeah. You know what he's doing? He's helping clean up my mess, Brother Lulu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I know you can't be bothered, right? But I wonder if the Lord will turn around and do us like we do the Great Commission. Ah, I can't be bothered. I'm not going to hear your prayers. I'm not fixing you this time. I'm not coming to your rescue this time. I'm not going to reach out. And I, I'm so thankful God's not that way. Uh, aren't, aren't you glad? I'll tell you what. If, God, if anybody was ever worthy of us jumping into his business and moving right on into the yoke with Jesus, I wonder if there's anybody here saying, you know what, Jesus? See, the key is to say, it's my mess too. Because I'm a child of the king. Oh, wait, wait, wait. See, 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 see. How many knows when a house has an issue, everybody in the house has an issue? Are there any children of God here today? Is there anybody in their father's house today 